Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com. And what you're about to see is the raw edit. I can't say raw edit of the week because we haven't done one of these in almost a year. And when I say we, I mean me and Adam Lerner or Adam Lerner and I. Now, some of you guys don't even know what the raw edit is because you haven't seen one. But we did about 100 of them over the first two or so years of the site being loaded or uh, being, being live where I would take raw files that you guys would send in or we would share my own or Adam's files and go ahead and edit them. Now, I... I took a rest from that for a while. Now we're bringing it back to start it again because it's fun. So what is it all about? How does the raw edit work? For those of you who don't remember or haven't seen it before, it's simple. We take a raw file. I go ahead and do my edit, and I screen flow the edit that I have. Adam goes ahead and does a screen flow of his edit. And then at the very end, we put both of them together in Lightroom, and we Skype in sharing screens so that I can see his edit, and he can see my edit, and we can rip each other's apart, or we can say, oh, how did you do this? And then I'd be like, oh, I got to go watch how you did this so that I can learn something. But the point of the raw edit is not to have a winner or a loser Well, sometimes it is to see which one you like better because it's nice to see, oh, I like Adam's better. Oh, I like Jared's better. But it doesn't really matter. It's personal preference when it comes to editing. The point here is I've got a style. Adam has a style. You have a style. And we put these files up for you to go ahead and edit the exact same file that we edited it. So at any point during this video, you can click up on the top left-hand corner of the screen to go access and download the raw file, or in this case, we save them as DNGs. So here we go. This is Adam's file, and I'm going to go ahead to edit it, and then he's going to edit it, and then we're going to come together and talk about it. He shot this with a Fuji X-Pro1, 1 one five hundredth of a second at f1.4, which is insanity zone, uh, uh, 320 ISO, 35 millimeters with a 35 millimeter burr, 1.4. So, this is Adam's file. I'm going to go ahead and edit it. Let's look. It is... It's hard to say if it's tack, tack, tack. Again, shooting at 1.4 is insanity for the most part, but it looks fine here. So what are we going to do? Are we going to crop it? Are we going to edit it? Are we going to go, well, we're going to edit it. Are we going to go black and white? Are we going to do color? Are we going to boomify it? Oh, I like boomifying it. Because, look, when it comes down to a model photo, generally they're softer and not as harsh. But she's wearing black leather booty th- boot things and a black leather jacket, and she's digging for gold. So it's like, well, what do I want to do with this? Well, I think it's a little overexposed. I want to bring it back. And then, oh, why don't we say some contrast here? Oh, and cue the commenters who go, Jared only slides sliders and doesn't know what he's doing when it comes to editing. He doesn't have an idea. Yeah, that's the point of editing is that you slide shit back and forth because then I'm going to slide shit back and forth. I'm going to slide shit back and forth. I'm going to slide because that's what you do when it comes to editing. You look at it. There should be like, oh, your tone, co- your tone curve should be X amount higher than this curve and the blah, blah, blah. You know what? If the photo looks like crap on the screen, I don't give a shit what the tone curve says. I want, it to, I want to look at it and go, oh, I like how gritty that is. Rant over. So this may be a little too harsh on the contrasty side, but whatever. I'm going to go with it for right now. I go based off of what looks right. What is going to feel right for me? for the photo that I'm editing. Wow, the color looks pretty good right out of the camera with this Fuji file. Gotta say, Fuji's, look how boomified those files end up looking when you get them. Really boomify right out of the camera. So here's the black and white. The color wasn't terrible. Let me go back into that. Let me go back uh, this. I'm gonna make a snapshot of that. Oh, there must have been a snapshot from Adam. I won't go and look at his snapshot to see what he did. Uh, all right, because DNG files, when you export them, maintain or retain the uh, the edits. All right, let's see. Yeah, and one thing with this is I think is the foot's a little too close to the, the bottom of the frame. That's a personal thing when it comes to cropping. I don't crop my own work, but I can crop somebody else's work. Oh, yeah, I want to do aspect ratio... Uh, where is it? 2, 3, which is 4 by CX. Definitely don't want to crop more from the bottom. Because I, I don't want the foot to be too close. But look at this. Bam! 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 That's what I'm talking about! 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this type of crop because it gives me an even amount of top headroom, a little bit extra up top with a little bit less down on the bottom. That depends on what you're talking about. Holy God, did my brain just go somewhere else a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go with this crop. You can also see where it was originally. Yeah, I like this. Now I'm just going to go into my Tweaky McTweakerson. This is how I edit my files. I'm not a big fan of, of overly touching up in terms of uh, getting in there and doing uh, a lot of people that go into uh, Photoshop, which is perfectly fine. And I think that's legal for us to go ahead and do in this competition where we're going back and forth. Wow, that maintains the uh, integrity of the file very well. You want to be very careful when you do the, the clarity, but this is, this is holding up really well. I wish it was a little sharper in her face. I don't want to go too bright. Pull back there. Yeah, I like the dark look like we're in an alley. Let's see. Shadows. Only the shadow knows. Boom. Yeah, we could play with some of this stuff. Oh, God, look at her lips. Hey, hello, look at my lips. I don't mess around with that too much. I'm going to go with something along this lines right now. Um, it, it, it My edit was based off of... It looks like she's in an alley. It's kind of dark. It's kind of grungy. It's kind of grimy. If it was a clothes, if it was something about the clothes, obviously black and white probably wouldn't work. Let's just flip over to the color real quick. Obviously, that, that I'll tell you, that doesn't work for color, but for black and white, it does. So I'm going to do two here real quick. I'm going to go ahead with, let's go to the color and see what happens when we pull back on the yellow. Yeah. It's got a gritty look. So that's my color. Somewhere around here is what I would do for a color edit. So why don't I go ahead and save that as number two. Update with current settings. And go with number three, which is my black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to keep tweaking a little bit more. Then we're going to get to Adam's edit. And then we're going to go ahead and put them side by side. So I'm going to do both of them. I'm going to do the color and the black and white. And that's what I'll put up uh, against Adam's files. So now let's see what Adam has to do with this edit. Adam Lerner, BrooklynPhotoWorks.com, and today we are here with a raw edit. And we've got a file that I shot with uh, this lovely model, Anna, that I was working with down on the Lower East Side. We were just kind of busting around town, doing some kind of street fashion photography thing, and we jumped into this little alleyway, and she was leaning on the wall, and it looked really cool because the light was coming in through the top of the buildings and yada yada. Anyway, um, this shot I realized I never even I never even edited, um, and it's time to do an edit, and I'm going to share it with you guys. All right, so very first thing we're going to do here is that we're going to go in there, we're going to kind of look at the image, and I'm thinking that I want to do a color edit first because I really like the tone of the wall and her jeans. I think that there's a lot of similarities there. Um, I like the kind of like putty red over here that kind of goes with this door. They kind of like balance each other out there. Um, and, you know, we'll bring in some of the skin tones as well. I always try to edit for skin tones when I'm dealing with portraits. So we're going to start with that. We're going to go color. And I can say I'm thinking we might be going black and white, but I want to do my color edit first. Um, just to quickly get it out of the way, shot Fuji X Pro 1 with the 35 millimeter F1.4, which is a 50 millimeter equivalent shot at f1.4 details right here and there we go so i'm going to get rid of that info hitting the i key see you later all right so first thing we're going to do is i'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit and it, you know the image wasn't really overexposed i mean you can just see what's going on with the histogram i mean we, there's even room to go even further but i'm going to bring it down because i want to add a little bit of a mood to it so i'm just going to bring it down just maybe a hair like that i'm going to add a little bit of contrast because i want to punch it up a little bit the image is it's a little soft and grainy because we're shooting with the fuji at, at 1.4 and whatever that's totally cool i dig it um we'll bring the highlights down you know just a little bit like that you know, and again, you can see I'm not really worried about exactly where I am on the um, on the slider. In fact, I'm just going to bring her face up here and make sure that I don't, you know, kind of get the because the highlights are weird. You know, the highlights are too much that, you know, kind of blows things out. If they're too little, you start to get kind of blotchiness and I don't really want that. So I'm going to kind of like leave it maybe somewhere around there. Um, 
I don't know. Let's let's keep it right there. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to get back out of this and go into my full view here, and I'm going to bring the blacks down just a hair, just a hair like that. And I don't really want any shadows to be to be boosted. Um, I'm going to go to my clarity here, and I'm just going to boost the clarity a little bit. And the clarity is going to offer some midtones. It's going to look a little bit brighter when we boost the clarity. Um, that's obviously a little bit too much. But I just want to add just a little bit of clarity to it, just a little something like that. And um, let's see what we want to do here. I'm going to bring the darks down a little bit. I want to just kind of just get a little. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. We're in the tone curve and look what's happening, guys. How cool is that? So that's just bringing the darks down. Wow. So it adds a little bit of contrast and in doing so it kind of gives a little bit more clarity. So now we've got like something a little bit more of a vibe. And if we go in the before and after, I'm just going to hit the, uh, the backwards slash key right here. You can see the difference already is starting to take shape. It's already got more punch. It's got more life to it. Um, as far as the white balance goes, um, I tend to not really get to the white balance until I've kind of done a bunch of um, the other editing there because I don't want, I, I want to see kind of where things are saturated before I affect the white balance. So let's just go down here. I'm going to grab the point curve and I'm going to see what medium contrast looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's definitely very cool. That's definitely very cool. Um, and um, yeah, I really like what's going on there. It's definitely got a cool vibe. I'm going to go into the white balance here and I'm going to just, you know, jump on the temperature there and I'm going to use the arrow key. And while looking at the image, I'm just going to hit the arrow key up a couple ticks right here just to give it a little bit of warmth. OK, and maybe I'll stop right about there. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. And again, you guys can see what I'm doing here is that I'm trying to focus on my image while changing the sliders without looking at the sliders and being worried about values. Okay, there's the before and there's the after. So now we're starting to get much more of a cool vibe going on here. Um, all right, so let's go down into our HSL. And, you know, we could probably get a little bit more of these blues to kind of pop. I mean, I don't want to get too crazy with it. And, you know, let's just see what happens. So there we go. We really have an intense blue. There we go with kind of a really desaturated blue. Um, I kind of like, I kind of want to just bump, bump it up just a notch. And I like that. I like that a lot. And I also want to kind of get these reds just to bump up a little bit. And you guys can see that I'm really kind of going in. I'm just kind of just doing this kind of very carefully and only going for certain, certain areas. I'm being very specific as to what I want to manipulate. There we go. That's kind of cool. I'm just really worried about the skin tones because if you start boosting a lot of red, you know, the skin tones can look funny. Let's just see how this looks. I'm just going to kind of play with this. And you know what? The cool thing about boosting the red is it just kind of gives her lips a little bit of a lipsticky look about them. So, okay. I don't mind that at all. All right. So we're going to just kind of zoom out of that. And again, let's look at the before and after. Before, after, before, after. You know, it definitely has much more of a vibe. It looks a little bit more intense. Um, as far as sharpening goes, I typically try to like, you know, focus on the eye. So I grabbed a little selector, you know, again, this image is a little bit soft, but I'm going to add a little bit of sharpening to it. And I'm just going to pump that up to about there. And I'm looking at my navigation window. That's where I want to go. I'm just going to move my radius up just a hair. And then I'm going to mask it and I'm going to hold down the uh, option key. And I just really am trying to sharpen the edge detail. Okay. Those are the edges. That we're seeing there and that's pretty cool there uh, i'm not going to add any noise reduction that's not really my vibe i'm not really into lens corrections let's just see what it looks like you know it probably doesn't even have a profile on 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 hand let's just see no there's not even a profile anyway so we're not even going to mess with that i do kind of want to add a little bit of vignetting to this so i'm just going to go into the post crop vignetting here i'm just going to pull this down just a little bit Something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, you can have a play with it. You can just see where you want to go with it. You know, and what I'm doing here is I'm kind of looking at what's going on in the street. And let's see, we'll add our midpoint, bring it out to there. Okay, roundness. Kind of want to just keep it like a little bit kind of, I don't really want a shape to it. And I'm going to just feather this off. 
to somewhere around there. And yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you ever want to see what it looks like with and without the uh, the vignetting, just turn it off, turn it back on. I like it. You know, it kind of just draws your attention a little bit more into Anna, into our lovely model right here. Um, I'm just going to see what happens if I add a little shadow detail. I feel like it's getting a little dark over there. Yeah, no, I don't really want that. I'm, I'm fine without it. Um, again, the highlights, I'm still going to try to pull those down a little bit. Somewhere around there. You know what? Um, that's that's actually pretty cool. I like it. Um, let's just see what we want to do. Just add a tiny touch of vibrance. Maybe just we'll bring our saturation down just a hair. And, um, and I really like that. I really like that a lot. Um, so I'm going to... What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save this as a snapshot. So I'm just going to go and um, do Control N, New Snapshot, and I'll just call this Color 1. One. Cool. So that's my Color 1 snapshot. And again, if we want to go before and after, we can see we've got like a pretty sweet color edit right there. Okay, so now I want to do a black and white because I really feel like this calls for black and white. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the V key, which is the conversion for black and white, and we're going to go black and white. And already, like, to me, it's like that's kind of awesome just on its own. Um, I'm going to punch up the contrast just a little bit there because I, I like the contrast. Um, I know Jared loves really contrasty black and whites. Um, I like silvery as well. I like when there's like that kind of silvery tone about them. Um, you know, to me, the, you know, punching up the, the clarity a little bit just gives this much more of kind of like a, a vintage vibe. Um, let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more vignetting, you know, because I just think it really works with the black and white. And I'm just going to clean this up down in here. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at all the different areas that are in there. Yeah, that's pretty cool right there. That's pretty cool. You know what I might actually do? I might actually just grab um, a brush tool right here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to go and burn highlights. So this is going to basically take down my my uh, exposure and my highlights. I'm just going to go for highlights right now. And I'm just going to paint over on this area. And I'm going to hit the O key. And that's going to show me where my brush is overlaid. So I know where I'm painting, OK? And all I'm just trying to do is I'm just going to try to reduce the highlights on this portion of the frame here, just so that it draws us more into Anna and kind of takes our attention a little bit away from this door, OK? And now what I can also do is you can see what's happened is like I've painted over Anna's jacket here. So if I hit the option key, all right, that gives me the erase or the undo version of the brush tool. And I can just paint over and you can see the red areas or the areas where I did formerly brush are disappearing on her. And I just want to make sure that she's not going to be um, covered like that. You know, and then I'm just kind of going to get refine this area a little bit and then just kind of clean it back up something like that whoop just trying to get in there do this in the interest of time and we'll do something like that now I'm gonna hit the O key and I'll turn the overlay off and you can really see the difference because I'll show you guys here's with the highlights on here's with the highlights painted over and I kinda like that I might even bring the exposure down just a hair okay I think that's pretty cool because again it, it just takes your attention a little bit away from that door and uh, brings your attention more on to Anna, which I think is really cool. You know, I might even paint a little bit over the top over here, you know, just to kind of give us a little bit more, again, just to bring us our attention more in this kind of area here. This is really super bright. So I'm going to just paint that in. And I'll put the overlay tool on so we can see what we're painting. Um, oh, look, I painted a little bit over hair, so I'll just undo that. <clears throat> and, you know, guys, there's no rules about this. I mean, you know, you can kind of just do whatever feels natural and whatever feels right. Um, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with editing. I think editing is a tremendously important part of what we do as photographers. All right, so there, I'm going to hit the O key, and I'm going to see what it looks like. And look at the before and after. I mean, that's like like a pretty dramatic difference, what we got going on over there. 
Um, yeah, I'll just paint over there a little bit. This is pretty cool, guys. I'm just going to take this door down, just that edge right there. Might just do this edge right here. You know, it's just about balance, too. All right. Very cool. So, um, yeah. You know what? It's one of those things that you could just kind of go crazy with the brush tool, but I am not going to go crazy. So I'm going to hit the K key and I'm going to close my brushes right there. And um, I think that that's pretty cool. I actually really kind of dig the black and white. I think the black and white's really, really pretty strong. And uh, maybe I'll just pop up the shadow just a hair. Let me see what that looks like. You know what? I'm not going to do the shadow. I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to boost the lights a little bit. There we go. Just a hair. Just a hair. And I might bring the darks down just a hair. Something like that. Mm. It's looking super contrasty. Let me just reset the contrast a little bit here. And I'm just going to... Let me see what it looks like when we desaturate the contrast. See, that's cool. I like the silvery tone. But I'm going to just keep the contrast where it was. I think it's pretty cool. Maybe, maybe somewhere about there. So I think that's going to be my black and white edit. So let me just um, save this right here. So I'm going to save this. I'm using Command and the N key. And I'll say this is black and white. And white. One. Okay. And uh, there you go. So those are my edits, guys. There's my color edit. And there's my black and white edit. So now it's time to put my photos next to Adam's photos. And it looks like we both did a little bit of editing, uh, one in color and one in black and white. And they look exactly the same. <laughs> Although two of them are bigger. Well, yes, that's because I, I used the crop word. Because what? It was, it was your photo. You did what? I cropped it. Well, first off, welcome back to uh, doing this. Yeah, good to be back. It's uh, We haven't done this in almost a year just because oh we gosh. haven't done it in almost a year. Time flies. Uh, so... Everybody got to see your edit. Everybody got to see my edit. Uh, you wanted to talk about presets real quick? Oh, sure. Um, so with this edit, uh, I have decided to share with you guys the presets for both of my edits. So I'm going to give you guys the color preset and the black and white preset. Those are going to be free downloads for you guys along with the, the raw files to edit. So you can use those as... as um, templates are kind of like baselines for editing photos or these photos or whatever photos i think i'll just put the presets in the same folder with the dng when yeah they download it so they could just get it i i'm not i don't do presets myself but uh what do, what do you think about the uh the crop of your photo you know i actually do like the crop um the thing is is that i liked kind of like the the length of the image i like the way it kind of you know, um, kind of drifted off into the the distance. And I liked the kind of information back there. I thought it was kind of interesting. But in looking at your crops, I really do like the crops a lot. I think that it, um, you know, draws you in a little bit closer. It's a, it's a different look. I mean, I don't know. I, I It didn't occur to me to crop these images, which I guess is the great thing about, you know, different kinds of editing styles, because you looked at these and you said, you know what, let me crop it. Let me bring her closer into the frame. And and I think that's cool. Well, I, I cropped it because the way that the foot to me is too close to the bottom and there's too much headroom. Right. Like it could have been a horizontal and just gone and seen more of the thing. Okay. I don't know that, but obviously it's it's all personal preference when it comes down to to the work, and and it did it kind of works in black and white, and it kind of works in color because it's a grungy feel, right? And I actually think our colors are well. Mine's a little more blue on the right than your than your color one, and yours has a little more gray. Was the wall gray? The wall was kind of like a gunmetal blue, kind of like that oh. grayish blue. Oh, all right. So yeah, you definitely pumped up the the blues a lot, and you can really also see it in in her denim. I actually played with pumping the blues up a bit and then I kind of pulled it back when it started getting to be a little bit too blue for me but um I like I like what you did with yours very much I mean I think it looks cool yeah and you also it looks like you went and bright I'm gonna have to watch your edit because I haven't seen it yet but it looks like you brightened her face a little more actually I didn't brighten her face at all like I didn't selectively brighten her face um I I went in and um, I went into the tone curve actually and utilize some of the the tools in there to kind of manipulate the image. <laughs> you didn't and hear my I I, fuck, I went off on the tone curve during my edit. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. No, this looks I just I feel that it needs to be tighter. Well, 
is it an you editorial know, it, shot it, or is it a advertisement? I, I feel like you cropped it too tight to the top of the head. Um, I, I, you know, for me, I think it loses a little bit of something. You know, it loses kind of the depth. I like the fact that she's kind of like a little bit small in this kind of big urban landscape. But, you know, they both work. And that's the cool thing. I think that in shooting fashion, I often am shooting a lot wider because a lot a lot of times the art directors, they want that, that room to crop. They want the room to overlay text. They want, you know, all that kind of freedom. And um, maybe in this shot, that was just kind of built into my mentality. But I really like the crop that you did with it. I think it's really strong. Well, that does work with what you said, because if you look at any of yours, you know, they could come in tighter. They could put words here, an advertisement here, and they have room to play with. And that's something I made mistakes with when I was younger, filling, filling the frame so much that it didn't leave any leeway for any publication to do anything with it. Right. Um, but this is a post crop of the photo, so... Well, I guess, I don't know. Why did you choose to use an X1, uh, X-Pro one X One on this? You know, the thing was is that when, when we decided to do the shoot, we had one hour to work together. I was in the middle of doing a bunch of things. She was going back and forth between, you know, different auditions and stuff like that. And we were literally going to meet on the street and walk around for an hour. And I thought to myself, I don't want to keep, I don't want to complicate things. I want to keep things really simple. And I, I brought the X-Pro1 and the X100S. And um, that's that's really all I had. And I, and I like kind of like the, the portability. And I like just shooting with a 50 millimeter lens. I think that when you keep it simple, you really kind of focus on, on, on you know, the shoot and not worrying about your gear and think like, hang on a minute. Let me change lenses. Let me grab the 7200. Let me, you know, you start thinking about all that stuff and then all of a sudden your time just starts to disappear. Or you could have just taken a 5D Mark III with a 51.2 and gone to town with it. Well, that's true too. But you know, I love the Fujis, man. I just love the the the, the form factor. I All like right. the look of it as well. I think that there's something about that sensor that just gives the images kind of a cool look. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's leave it at that. So we've got both of these. We've got my two two edits. We have Adam's two edits. Which edits do you like the most and why? If you're going to leave a comment, make sure it's constructive, not that Jared sucks, Adam sucks, whatever. <laughs> let's see, you know, go into something like, you know, I like Jared's crop, but Adam's edit. But here's why. You know, this is how you're going to critique somebody's work is you sit here and you go, yeah, I like this. I like this. I maybe didn't like this, but I can see what you were getting at. Be constructive in your criticism when you're doing it. Don't just tear people uh, apart without recourse, not recourse, but without any way to back it up. You got to back it up. But what we have done is uploaded the raw file along with Adam's presets so you can have those and see what they've done. As a DNG, you can click on the top left-hand corner of the screen or go over to the website uh, if you're on Facebook and click the link and you can go and uh, download that file, edit it, and then upload it. You can post it on Facebook. Post it on the photos on the wall share your edits there and just remember that this is adam's photo it's not yours you do not own it do not try to use it for your own portfolio or anything along those lines uh and in the future i'll probably call for other edit raw edit files from you guys again but for now we're going to stick with adam's files my files maybe some from sutter maybe some from eckert and go from there adam thank you yeah, thanks, Jared. You know, I'm just looking at your black and white, man. Your your tones on that are fantastic. Yeah, I mean, and I'm and I don't know how to edit. You know, I'm just one of those guys that just moves sliders until I see something I like. Because there's did you something... put any toning on it? Because the blacks no. look great. No, no toning. Yeah, it just looks really solid, man. It's just oh, good this stuff. is the this is the JPEG. I, I exported the JPEG, so oh, I can't see my settings. Okay, well, I have what... I have the the I can send you the presets. I can send you the DNG back. You can see what I did. Oh well. Anyway, I just you know you always really you know have those really nice punchy black and whites, and that's a really sweet one. Actually, what I can do, I can go into here real quick and just go to this, go back to develop, go back to this. That's the color one. That's the black and white, and you can see my edits right here on the right hand side oh nice all oh, right wow. yeah you 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 punch that contrast all the way up practically no i didn't it's only at 87 87 all the way up is 97 <laughs> for me all right thanks Very adam cool. all right man all right guys you can go subscribe to adam's channel whatever that's called this week uh pop up on the screen go ahead you can subscribe to him to see the videos when he puts them out and that is where we're going to end it 
Oh, if you want to see other raw edits, go ahead, click up on the screen as well. There's post ones from back in the day, but we're going to start getting these going again. Jared Poland, Froknowsphoto.com. See ya.